I love money. You said it too. I love money. Sometimes that love of money gets me in trouble. Sometimes that love of money is what Jesus was talking about and what Paul was talking about in actually one word, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. But also by the grace of God, with God's help, I learned to love what I can do, what we can do with everything God blesses us with, including that money. And we're witnessing that right now. So, in searching around a little bit on the internet, I went on Wikipedia, I ran across this quote about money. I thought it, it applies very, very well. So, we're in, first, we're in 1 Timothy 6, verses 1 through 10, in those words that we read just a moment ago that Merle read for us. But here's the quote that I got. Money is simply a third party's promise to pay which we accept as a full payment in exchange for goods. Think about it. Think about those dollar bills you got in your wallet or in your purse or those coins that are jingling around in your pocket or that check that you write out, that piece of paper, right? That suddenly becomes very real when you put your name to that or your bank account or whatever accounts you have that come to you maybe once a month on a sheet of paper and it says, this is what you have in your account. Yeah, money really is just that. It's an agreement we have that there's going to be value to this stuff in our pocket or in our wallet or on paper here that we have for our retirement or wherever it's at, in our bank account or with, with stocks or bonds or whatever it is. It's really just on paper, isn't it? It's not really something we can touch. Or the second quote, money is not backed by anything physical, right? That dollar bill is really worth maybe a fraction of a cent in actual paper and ink that's there. Coins now, especially, the metal that's in them is not worth that much. Instead, it relies on our trust, right? That we trust one another that when I spend this money, I will get an equal amount of goods and services with that money I give. But we trust one another with that, don't we? And I thought, what a perfect example. I love money, right? And love and, and money is definitely a sign of our trust in God. And as Christians, we look at that in a totally different way. Paul writes it this way in 1 Timothy 6. He says these wonderful words, if I can get that to switch. He says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment is a great gain. In other words, we realize that, that this money is a great trust thing too. That God blesses us with what we have in order to test our trust of him. Can we really trust him that he's going to continue to provide what we have? Do we trust him and believe and know that the ability to even make any money at all, to have the things we have, really comes as a blessing from him? And can we trust him that he'll continue to do that without hoarding it, without holding it close? Because that's the problem with the rich man in the story that Jesus told. He thought that he had everything in what he had right there and didn't need anything else and found out that when he died, he lost it all. Whereas the beggar, who had very little in monetary things, had everything when it came to the end. Did you notice the great reversal? Hence, a godliness with contentment, a reordering of that phrase, I love money, to reflect not a love of money, that, that I'm hooked on that and that I'm dependent upon that for my success, for my happiness, for my well-being, but rather I learn to love money because it, like every other gift that God has given to me, is intended to be a blessing to me. So when it comes to money, these are the things we can truly say. We can go right along with the Beatles and say, all you need is love. Because that's really true, right? All we need is God's love. And we've got that. In fact, let me say it this way, and I'm being punny. We are rich in the love of God, aren't we? We are truly rich in the love of God. It's the forgiveness of our sins that never runs out. It's his love for us that he promises he'll be faithful to us all the time. We are truly rich in the love and the forgiveness of God. And then there's heaven with that promise he has for us. We are truly rich in the things of God. And so really what we do need is love. God's love for us. And we have that. And in that, because we know that God loves us, we know that we can trust him. So whatever situation you're in right now, whatever amount you have, whether that be big or small, you know that one thing is constant, and that is God's love for you. And it's going to fluctuate during your life, isn't it? You've seen that true in your life. You've seen that, the, the money situation and, and then that in your life change throughout your lifetime. But one thing hasn't changed. 
And that is God's commitment, God's love, and his promises to you. It stays the same. And you also learn, misquote, right? Money is the root of all evil. No, it says, the love of something besides God is the root of all kinds of evil. And it's true. You see it happen in your own family. You see it happen in relationships where oftentimes it comes down to money and then suddenly we're not talking to each other. Suddenly we say things and we do things to each other that we would have never done before. And you see Satan working in that and you can see that happen uh, in, in the destruction of those relationships and in our world. No wonder scripture would warn us about that. But rather teach us again to trust in the one in whom we can trust, in God, our Savior. And then in that, to see the beautiful picture of what we have in Christ Jesus. You saw an example of it in the story that Jesus told about the rich man and Lazarus. The rich man who had everything that he needed in this life, but yet did not have something that would take him to life eternal in heaven. Lazarus, who was at the other extreme of that, who, who seemingly had very little when it came to this life, but actually was rich in the things that lasted for eternity. And Jesus gave us those words. And as Elliot said in the children's lesson, God gave us that, that word of God in Amos and in, in 1 Timothy in order to be a warning to us, to remind us again, to put things back in order. Because you see, we love money. And the love of money, in the wrong way, takes us down the wrong track. But properly seen, we can love, and, and properly put in perspective, we can love what money can do. Don't love money, but love what God enables you to do through that money. In other words, think about your life. Think about the things that you can do because God has provided the means for you to be able to do that. When you get a chance to gather together with friends and you, and you go out to eat and you celebrate something in someone's life and at the end of that evening you get that check, you say, I can pay for that. I can take cash out of my wallet, I can give a credit card and I'm able to pay for that. Where does that come from? A gift from God. Look at what you can do and the love that you can show through that money. Or as a parent, and especially appropriate as we're talking about a baptism. Isn't it something, isn't it beautiful to provide a house and a home for your family? To put, to put food on the table, to put clothes on, uh, on the backs. To have that and to be able to have the means to be able to do that. We love what we can do with what God has blessed us with. And when we look at it that way, we see those simple pleasures, those beautiful gifts that come in the simplest of things. A house. Food on a table, clothes on our back, the chances to be able to be together, to enjoy family, to enjoy one another, to, to build memories as a family. That comes because we love what we can do with the money that God has blessed us with. And not only that, but also with the money that God has blessed us with, we can love to be able to share, to give to somebody without ever expecting to get anything back. Why? Because we love and show love with the money that God has blessed us with. And we don't have to worry about being repaid. We can just do that. You do that here at St. Paul's with something like our discretionary fund and, and, or with our food pantry. And there we say, hey, we love the money that God has blessed us with because now we can help support someone else. I told people in first service, I said it came across a single mom this past week. And this single mom is trying to get a vehicle for her home. And she can't afford to get that. And she's going to go out and get a loan for about 28% interest to try to buy that car. Now, I don't know about you. But maybe God tugs on your heart there and you say, hey, I can help out there. We have something called the discretionary fund here at St. Paul's. If you want to be a part of that, talk to me about that. Maybe we can help her to get that car. And you see, you know why? Because we love what we can do with the money that God has blessed us with. And especially in those situations, we don't have to worry about getting paid back, right? Because we know and we trust God, he's gonna to continue to provide for us. That's just one example. But we know the ways that we love the money that God has given us 
in supporting things like St. Matthew's Soup Kitchen in Chicago in the Pilsen neighborhood. And the opportunity we have to be faithful to God in making disciples of all nations and reaching out with the love of God in that situation. Don't you love what you can do with that money there? Or maybe it's through the food pantry. Or maybe it's through supporting prison ministry like Deaconess Lori Wilbert does. As we reach out to folks in prison, places we can't go, we can do it through Lori. Don't you love what you can do with your money right there? Or maybe it says we support missionaries. Like going to Alaska like we've had a chance to do the past three summers. And, and be able to, to reach out with the gospel there. Don't you love what you can do with your money? And then look around. As a family, with the money that God has blessed us with, we can raise our children. Don't you love to be able to see them grow and mature and be nurtured and fed and, and to see them through all the stages of your life? Don't you love to use the money that you have to make sure they have an education and go to college or able to get a job and then later on uh, come into a relationship and have a family and give us grandchildren and things like that? Don't you love what we can do with the money that God has blessed us? And then, when you look in the parables of Jesus, Jesus commends the person who takes what God gave to them and then uses it. That's an example, exactly, of a wise and faithful servant of God who knows that we love money because we love what God can do through us with the money that he has blessed us with. And rather than that money being a curse to us, rather than that money being something that we worry about and we fret about, we love what God has given to us because it gives us opportunity to show his love to others. And so three things. In the best way that we can do it, worry less about money. Listen to some words from a very wise man from Ecclesiastes. As Solomon says to us, the one who loves money will not be satisfied with money, um, nor he who loves wealth with his income. This is vanity. That's words from a wise man who had every single thing he could ever want and found out that it didn't bring him happiness and that true joy came in knowing the work and the blessing of that work and loving the money that God blessed him with through that. Secondly, be generous. Paul says, as, as he tells more later on in 1 Timothy, he says it's not a sin to be rich. If God has blessed you richly, then it gives you more opportunity to love that money that God has blessed you with because you can be generous with that too. And be generous and truly in the things of God and be able to see, have the joy of being able to give and to see God work through what he's blessed you with. So be generous. And also, trust God. Trust God. One of the passages that we love to quote and we love to come back is the last part of this verse right here where God says, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Well, look at the context in which that's said in Scripture. It's in the context of money. He says, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because you know this, you know that God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So love money. Don't love money, but love what God enables you to do with the money that he blesses you with. And continue to trust him and put your faith in him and continue to love everything he's created for you, for your good and for the good of others. In the name of the one, who made you richer than anything, who made you recipients of the love of God, who forgives your sins, who promises to be with you always, who promises to continue to bless you. In the name of Jesus, amen.